Moving on to other news. Large crowds commemorate Anzac Day in Australia and New Zealand to pay tribute to their war debt, largely free of pandemic restrictions for the first time since 2019. Australia and New Zealand commemorate Anzac Day every April 25th, the date in 1915 when the Australia and New Zealand Army Corps landed in Turkey in an ill-fated campaign that was the soldiers' first combat of World War I. Monday was the first such commemoration of casualties of all wars since both nations withdrew troops from Afghanistan last year. The dawn services were followed by marches around the country, including in Canberra and Sydney. In Australia's capital, Canberra, veterans walked through the streets with a marching band. Sydney's downtown Martin Place was filled to capacity with tens of thousands gathered for its dawn service. There were no restrictions on numbers attending most Australian services, although some, including at the west coast city of Perth, were ticketed events to reduce crowds. In the meantime, Anzac Day was commemorated in New Zealand with Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern in Auckland slaying a breath at the Mount Albert War Memorial Hall. The Ukrainian flag was flown above the Auckland War Memorial Museum ceremony. The dawn service in New Zealand's largest city, Auckland, was initially planned to be closed to the public due to pandemic restrictions, but a veterans association intervened and a smaller than usual crowd was allowed to attend. Fresh in all our minds is the invasion of Ukraine, a most grim reminder of the fragile nature of peace and the devastating impact of war on people's lives. We may feel a great distance from this conflict, but we are inextricably linked to what it represents. During a workshop on blue carbon and the blue economy, the Indonesian Ministry of Environment, Siti Nurbaya, said that her ministry is setting numerous goals and targets, including the goal to plant more than 600,000 hectares of mangroves. We also perlu melihat potensi emitan karbon yang lain yang mampu menyerap karbon setara atau bahkan lebih besar dari hutan di daratan, yaitu ekosistem pesisir yang mampu mengurangi emisi gas rumah kaca secara signifikan. Jadi kita sudah nanam lebih dari 80 ribu hektar dan seperti arahan yang berhormat Bapak Presiden akan dilakukan penanaman sampai 600 ribu hektar lebih. Meanwhile, the Indonesian Ministry of Maritime and Fisheries is set to cooperate with the Ministry of Environment to help develop coastal ecosystems. Not just developing mangroves, both ministries will also focus on maintaining and developing seagrass and coral reefs. Pesisir, wilayah pesisir itu ada mangrove, kemudian ada uh, padang lamun, lalu kemudian ada uh, apa namanya itu lumpur payau yang harus tetap dijaga. Bagaimana kemudian kita bisa membuat juta kilometer juga bukan juta hektar. 